everyone. You know, every once in a while, a story comes along that captivates the country. The story of college linebacker Manti Teo and his fictitious girlfriend has become a national obsession and has been called one of the strangest sports stories in recent memory. Perhaps because it's got all the makings of a page turner or made for TV movie. Football, fame, technology, and deceit and so many unanswered questions. Today, Manti speaks in his first television interview since the scandal broke. But we begin with a look back at the twists and turns of this bizarre story. Here's Matt Gutman. Ferocious on the field, Manti Teo is a Notre Dame golden boy. Restoring glory to a lagging football legacy, the linebacker lifting the blue and gold to their first undefeated season in decades. He grew up in Hawaii, nourished on his Mormon faith and football. But in his senior season, his story was shaped not only by his play, but also by a dramatic turn in his personal life. Teo told teammates and his parents he'd been dating a Southern California beauty named Lene Kakua. They had met online in 2009. Then, in April 2012, she was in a near-fatal car crash that left her in a coma. And in June, while still in the hospital recovering, she was diagnosed with leukemia. They were so close, according to Teo, they'd fall asleep every night to the sound of the other breathing. She was just that person that I turned to, the love of my life. But then, on September 12th, just hours after he was told his grandmother had passed, he learned Lene had also died. Last thing she said to me was, I love you. It was a romance and a tragic twist that made for great copy. And the stories in print and on TV piled up about Mante Teo's heavy heart as he led his team to victory after victory. His fame grew, and on December 8th, he was voted runner-up for the Heisman Trophy, nearly unprecedented for a defensive player. But two days before that ceremony, and three months after Lene Kakua had died, Teo received a phone call. He told ESPN's Jeremy Schapp about that call in an audio interview last week. He said, it's Lene. And so we carried on that conversation, and I just got mad, and I just went on a rampage. Like, how could you do this to me? Like, I ended that conversation by saying simply this. You know what? Lene, my Lene died on September 12th. But in fact, Lene didn't die because it would turn out she never existed. The sports website, deadspin.com, broke the story. We got an email uh, last week that said there's something fishy about Lene Kakua, Manti Teo's alleged girlfriend. You guys should check it out. On January 16th, the same day that Deadspin report was published, Teo says he got a call from his prankster confessing everything. It was only then that Teo admitted to his friends and the media he'd actually never met Lene Kakua. But those pictures were real, belonging to a real Diana Mira inside edition captured on video for the first time. She's a 22-year-old who went to high school with the prankster. She denies any involvement. Teo claimed to be a victim of catfishing, which has become the phrase associated with someone being tricked into a romantic relationship through an online encounter after the movie of the same name. According to Teo, the man behind the hoax, Renaya Tuisisopo. Hey, what's up, everyone? Um, this is Renaya. His victims say the 22-year-old Christian crooner created the personality of the lovely Lene Kakua and engaged Teo in an intense phone and online relationship with a woman who didn't exist. Some remain skeptical, thinking Teo must have played a part in creating the drama. But while he now admits he embellished this story in interviews and to his parents, he denies he took part in the scam. Were you in any way part of this? No. Never. Never. Ever. Would I be part of this? Still so many questions remain. Manti Teo, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. So, sitting next to you as that piece ran, I couldn't help but wonder what was going through your head. Some good times and some bad times. I just... 
Good memories and bad memories. What have the last few weeks been like for you? I think for me, it's, it's been hard. It's been difficult. Uh, just, you know, not only for myself, but, you know, to see your last name and just to see it plastered everywhere and to know that, you know, I represent so many people and that my family is experiencing the same thing. I think that's what was the most hard for me. The big question everyone is asking is, did you somehow help concoct this hoax or are you in fact an innocent victim? We're gonna be talking about that when we come back. Still to come. One of the theories is you created this whole scenario to cover up your sexual orientation. Are you gay? And what Manti told his father. Why did you lie to him? At some point, did you just feel like I'm in this too deep? That's later.